thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm sort of new to what you guys do, um, but I feel like I've been red pilled my whole life, um, to be honest. And um, I know what you guys are doing is important, and I'm a fan. Um, Lolo, I just bought your book. I haven't dived into it yet, but um, men are under attack, and family law is a nut grinder. Um, marriage, of course, can also be a real nut grinder. But having said that, I'm conflicted because I'm a white guy and I see what's going on with white birth rates and it's, you know, it's a real existential threat. You know, we're looking at in decades having real problems. So how do we balance um, not being taken advantage of um, as individuals, but also have some sort of long-term macro um, view of the future um, for for people uh, like me? Let me ask you this, and again, this is just an honest question. Do you really care about the future of a particular race? Because you're going to, I mean, and again, if the answer is yes, that's cool. I mean, some people have more of a long-term view. Some people really believe that legacy or or racial legacy is very important. But do you really care, or is this, or, or are you talking about something else, possibly? No, you know, I hear what you're saying. It, it does sound strange. Um, you know, one one day, a few months ago, I was driving down this freeway, massive freeway, and um, it just dawned on me that I was so happy that whoever funded and all the contractors and the workers who built that freeway, I'm so glad they did it, you know, because right. here I am buzzing along at uh, 70 miles an hour okay, and sense. getting to where I want to get. Right. And um, when I look at our ancestors, not just whites, but all ancestors, sure. what they've done to build roads, so to speak, as a metaphor for people. Um, I just, I look at where we're at right now, and, and in 300 years, will people say, wow, there, there was a turning point in, you know, after the 60s, maybe with free love and birth control and this and that. And, um, and, and now we have a real problem. You know, we can have a real problem. And again, I'm not going to be here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm also interested in science. I'm interested in the big philosophical questions. I'm sort of a, I guess, a nerd in that way. Um, so uh, do I personally care? Sort of. Yeah, I, I do sort of personally care. I know the Japanese also have a real issue with this. They, they got a worse yeah. work rate than we do, yeah. white folks, yeah. you know. So I don't know. I just wonder um, what you guys think about that, that sort of macro view. How do we do it? Because I know, dude, I mean, I, like I said, I'm a fan of what you guys do. I'm new to what you guys are doing. But um, I know that women, I, I believe in a hypergamy thing, of course, and um, I know men get taken advantage of it. And part of me feels like we should go on strike, essentially, that we should go on strike to, to get women to be better to us. Um, Herbivore men went on strike in Japan. It doesn't work. Yep. Yeah. You're going to yeah. find somebody else. Um, listen, I can I can answer your question. I guess, I guess you're asking, are white people in trouble uh, or are other races in trouble? The answer is yes. And the reason why is because of feminism. And again, that's the easy answer, but stay with me here. If you watch anything, okay. if you're on social media, television, movies, white men are consistently portrayed as inept, latent beta males, while black men are portrayed as static alphas. Here's the thing. Most women are attracted to white men. Most women want to marry white men because they are attractive. And attractive is, attract, attraction is different than being aroused. Women are attracted to stability. They are aroused by masculinity. And when the, when the men, like, like white guys uh, have, a, have a built-in advantage. There's, listen, there's no hate. It is what it is. I don't care. That's fine. But when white men who have a built-in advantage with with the most desirable women in the world you guys are handicapped you guys are hamstrung by the message and white girls look at tv and they actually believe this stuff but here's the thing if you look outside i mean i don't know i mean you guys can correct me on this if i'm wrong it would appear that masculinity is down at in all races for, listen, for, and, and listen, right. we, we, uh, black men, I think we represent 7% of the, 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 the population in the United States. But if you're looking at the ratio, the same number of white men, the same ratio, the same percentage of white men who are uh, who have beta traits and non-masculine, guess what? The same, it's the same with black, it's the same with black men. So I think, I think the reason why you're concerned is because you believe that white girls are breeding with, with, uh, with, with men other than white men. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's nobody true. Know. Right, right. No, no, nobody will no, ever no. know. But that's that's, that's, that's what it is. I'm, yeah. Let me see if I got. Let me see if I got this straight. Because like I've, 
I get this a lot, particularly from more tradcon people, where they say, you know, a uh, white, uh, white, the right race is below uh, replacement level, right? Uh, and it's uh, it's the Muslims that are going to dominate the future because they keep their women in line and they they deny them you know they deny them rights they deny them you know personhood I guess uh, and it seems like the women are okay with that I mean at least it's, it depends on the society that you're talking about but I think that what it comes I I think that what what Donovan is saying is correct I think there's a, there's been a quantum shift in uh, what what is masculinity and what is not masculinity so um honestly i think it's it's not just a uh you know a white issue it's like a male issue it's a man's issue and uh and yeah i 100 percent agree i think that there needs to be some sort of I mean, that's one of the reasons we're doing what we're doing right i mean it's to to raise if nothing else the red pill raises awareness to these to these uh these issues just like you're talking about i think that where we kind of get off track on this is the tradcon idea that um that if you're not married with two kids by the time you're 25 years old and you're not and you haven't married a white girl as a white man then you you are a traitor to your to your race you know you're you're an ethnic traitor of some sorts uh i don't necessarily agree with that but i think that that's one of the things that that these guys they i think the ideology uh, supersedes the reality. And so when you get these, these trad cons that will come and say, well, you know, men need to man up, men need to man up and take responsibility and they need to, you know, to, 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 you know, women wouldn't be where they are right now if men just simply manned up and took responsibility and took over. Yeah, they were. I, I would love to see you do that. I you tell me what your plan is to, to initiate that. And I'll be happy to, because the way I see it, particularly in trad con circles right now is it's all about a hundred percent, responsibility for the guy with zero percent authority so they don't give that man any kind of leeway they don't we, we don't make him the head of the household anymore he's just somebody who happens to live there and is somebody who's a who's a mule like what i call a mule the guys there's just there to to bring in the money and they and just to sort of take directions and he maybe he gets a man cave and he can go live in the man cave you know and it, to me that seems kind of shitty because in the end Women want a guy who has authority. They want a guy who is at the top of the dominance hierarchy, but yet they hamstring him, just like uh, Donovan was saying. Hey, listen, race is of little consequence. Again, yeah. women don't, it's not like white girls all of a sudden love black guys. No, all women of all colors are physically, viscerally aroused by masculinity. And it would appear, again, I'm not everywhere all the time, but it would appear that black men exhibit more masculinity than white men and listen again the media is not doing white guys any favors yeah. that's for sure right so yeah. i would i would say that just i would say be, i understand what you're, where you're going with this and i i understand your concern but i i would say don't let that fog up your your perception of you know what the red pill is all about it's not i think that's that's one thing i kind of wanted to hit on today because we're doing red pill 101 a lot of critics of the red pill think it's just uh scorched earth like we're just going to sit poolside while the world burns no i mean we're, we're raising awareness here I, I don't consider myself a big tau i don't consider myself an mra i don't even consider myself a pua but there's a lot i, I pick and pull what I think are the best parts of that. And part of the MRA side of things or part of the MGTOW side of things is raising awareness to the state, you know, the issues of men right now. And women don't like that. They don't like to be reminded of that. Just like what, what uh, Donovan's talking about right now. The, if we look at popular culture, if you look at the media, if you look at, uh, you know, song lyrics and movies and everything else, it's all very, uh, what I call the fempowerment movement. And that's across the board. And, and, and Donovan had this one, I think, what was it, weren't you talking some, weren't we doing something about how black men were, were going, were running off to Brazil to find more feminine women? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, that, that to me seems like a, an issue of like you know, racial replacement levels. No, listen, if they're going off to Brazil to, to find a feminine woman, you know, that's, that's there's a black issue right there. Listen, listen, all women. And of course, the reason why we're bringing up white girls is because white girls are the majority of women in the United States, but women are, they're aroused and attracted by masculinity. We as men, we're attracted and aroused by femininity. Black women ain't fucking feminine. I don't give a fuck what you say, man. The, listen, and I'm not talking about your top one percenters. Anytime somebody makes a case, well, I know of a black woman, sweetheart, she's a one percenter, right? She's got her options. I'm talking about the average black woman is 
more fucking masculine than I guess I am. And so black men are just not going to fuck. They're looking for other races of women to stick their dicks in and, and not have to fight with these bitches. So this is why black guys are, are, are starting to sort of migrate from black women to other races of non-black women. And because white women are the most populous in the United States, it would appear that black guys are starting to go for white girls and this and that and the other. I fall into that camp, man. Like, this is just how it is. I don't fuck, I don't fuck with black women because they're, they're too fucking masculine. I'm not trying to date a man. I'm not gay. I'm not fucking men. Sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. It's, yeah, it's weird. So on one side, I get where he's coming from. But on the other side, I'm kind of like the end result of what he's worried about. So I'm kind of <laughs> conflicted here. <laughs> uh, I will say this, though. I noticed, uh, you remember those when the Proud Boys first came out, they had that little thing where they got them together. It looked like a testicular cancer meeting. Mm -hmm. But one thing I would suggest is just do what you can for the goal that you want. Like if you're not a masculine guy who can attract enough women to even have this become a concern, like if you don't have girls wanting three babies with you out the door, I'd just say work on that as opposed to just yelling into a hurricane and wondering why other guys don't do it. I mean, beyond that, no drop is going to change the flood. There's demographic changes. They're not going to change. Mormons, like do what Tanner Guzzi's doing. He has like, what, four kids now? Almost five? I think, I think number five's on the way, actually. Yeah, so like if you're really in about the building up the tribe back to greatness or whatever, go to Salt Lake City. Yeah, be the change you want to see.